Molly Pitcher has a ridiculously perfect name for someone who's known as carrying pitchers of water to men on the battlefield during the Revolutionary War. And so the question is, did this person just have a perfect name, or was this person a composite of a bunch of women? So historians have been debating this heroine for two centuries, and in the process they have uncovered some like seriously compelling contenders. So the first one, one of my favorites, is Mary Hayes, and she could hang with soldiers. I really like reading these early accounts where they mention that like she is a filthy mouth and she chews tobacco. Oh, and she was also pregnant at the time. So yeah, she's 22. She follows her husband into war. She's there to basically give him water, give other soldiers water. But it turns out that he's really lucky to have her because he's manning a cannon during the Battle of Manmouth and he actually collapses. He might have been wounded, he might have had heat stroke, we don't know. And I'm not sure if Mary knew at the time because she was like, okay, just get the help you need. I am going to take over here. And she mans the cannon and we don't know if she had training, she just took over. There's a diary entry by an eyewitness who claims that enemy fire was so substantial that it took out the entire bottom half of her petticoat. I like to imagine he was like, petticoat down, but there's no way he said that. Anyway, she survived, and she got a personal thanks from none other than the general himself, George Washington. And then 40 years later, the state of Pennsylvania awarded her a pension of $40, which sounds like terrible money now, but back then it was like pretty decent pay. Okay, so let's review. We've got an eyewitness account, we've got a letter of thanks from George Washington, and we've got a pension. So it seems like historians should be like, okay, debate settled, let's move on. Mm -mm. There's another really good contender, and she was in the same regiment. Her name was Margaret Corbin, but she wasn't wearing petticoats. She was wearing a uniform, but this isn't like one of those great stories about a woman who cross-dressed during the war. She was actually like publicly a woman who was called Captain Molly. Now, Molly's husband, he was also in the same regiment. She followed him as well. But he was on the firing line and he was actually wounded, which is when she stepped in and was then immediately wounded herself. And she was captured by the British, eventually released, reassigned, goes to West Point and performs guard duty. And we know this. We know this because we have regiment roles and we have her fellow officers who basically wrote to the government and asked for her to get state and federal pension. And that's really significant because it means that she was recognized by the military and treated just like a regular soldier. I could keep going. There are many more stories, many more contenders, and historians are always asking, who was it? Was it this woman? Was it that person? Writing articles and books to prove their point. But I don't think it matters. I think the point is, there were all these Molly pitchers. There were all these women who were brought onto the battlefield to carry water and ended up basically saving men who were supposed to be doing the fighting. So like, let's celebrate all of them.